I use carjack to simplify adjusting the router bit height on our router table. But when I surprised my friend with a new workbench, I gave him my only scissor jack. Since then, adjusting the height has been a challenge. So I decided to make a DIY card jack using our CNC router and some plywood offcuts. After studying how the scissor card jacks are made, I designed a decent looking and hopefully functional option. So the idea is that we have a threaded rod as the power screw with assemblies attached to it. These will hold the lifting arms. And of course, we have a larger size base panel and a slightly smaller top bracket. To ensure the car jack doesn't tilt while adjusting the height, we must have gear teeth at the ends of the lifting arms. And once the design is ready, it's time to make the project. So I load the plywood on the CNC router and start cutting the parts. Since I'm using our offcuts for the project, I had to lay out the components on multiple sheets. First I make the lifting arms and then I can load a bigger sheet on our CNC's work surface to make the remaining parts. I'm using 12mm sheets for the project. It should be sturdy enough for the car jack to support our router. Whenever I make parts for our projects, I cut the joint holes and do all the necessary pocketing operations before I continue with the component outline cuts. This ensures the best precision and quality components. Some car jack parts are quite small, so I have to use support tabs for the outline cuts. For bigger components, I do the contour cuts in one pass. The shavings left in the cutting grooves are enough to keep the parts in place while cutting and it's always satisfying to remove the parts from the workpiece. Removing the smaller parts from the sheet requires using a chisel and a mallet, but it doesn't take long before we can start rounding the edges of the components. This time I'm using a 45 degree chamfer bit and quickly go over the edges of the larger parts. Unfortunately, the bit's bearing is too big to fit between the gear teeth, so I will have to sand the gaps by hand. Once all the larger parts are rounded nicely, I can start working on the smaller components. First I use a box cutter knife to remove the remains of the support tabs, and then I can sand each edge by hand. We have to get rid of these wood shavings, and this is the only safe option. To clean up the joint and screw holes, I use a countersink bit. When all the parts are cleaned up, we can start assembling the car jack. As the first step, I attach the star knob part to the threaded rod. To fix it in place, I will use flange nuts. At this point, I'm not sure where the optimal place for the star knob would be, so I don't secure it in place yet. Now we can start attaching the main pivot axis to the M8 rod. The closest axis to the star knob will have a nut secured inside. This will allow us to adjust the car jack. I'm gluing the main axis parts together. To ensure the parts are positioned correctly, I also glue these small puck parts to the assembly. They will serve as the axis for the lifting arms. To be sure they won't come apart while we are using the car jack, I secure the first box with a couple of screws. For that I have to pre-drill the screw holes, because we don't want to break the parts by accident. Once the screws are in place, I can glue two more axis box to the assembly. Now we have to attach the second axis to the threaded rod. This assembly should fix the rod in place while allowing it to rotate freely. So we have to secure the small puck between the axis components. Again, I'm using the flange nuts. For some reason, I forgot to film the part where I tightened the nuts with the wrenches. We have to be sure the nuts and the small puck stay together within the glue up. Again, to ensure the correct positioning of the axis components, I glue the small pox in place and secure them with a couple of screws. And then I add two more axis pox to assembly. Now the main part of the car jack is complete and we can start attaching the extension arms to the project. But before that, we have to add a couple of M8 screws into the pockets. When those are in place, we can attach the extension arms to the main axis. It's important to make sure the gear fingers align properly. Then it's just a matter of securing the top bracket rib in place with a couple of nuts. I'm not tightening the nuts too much, since the parts should move freely for the scissor jack to be functional. After both of the top arm sides are in place, I can attach the top brackets panel. I have to add a couple of screws to secure it in place. Again, to prevent the screws from breaking the bracket rib components, 
I pre-drilled the screw holes. Attaching the bottom extension arms required following the same steps as before. Installing the M8 screws into the pockets and attaching the extension arms to assembly. The only difference is we have to glue the access cover components in place. These will prevent the jack from falling apart while adjusting the height of the router. Also the base panel holders have to be attached to the outside of the lifting arms. As the final step, we have to attach and secure the base panel. And now the moment of truth. Will the scissor jack work? After rotating the threaded rod a couple of times, it seems to be moving quite nicely. However, to see how well it extends, I'm attaching the cordless power drill at the rod and give it a go. While the car jack is at its lowest position, I secure the star knob in place and cut off the excess rod. Since we will use the car jack for adjusting the router bit, the maximum load is not that important for us. However, I'm still curious if it would be able to lift the 10 kg dumbbell. The power screw is a little bit difficult to turn, but the car jack seems to be working. Now it's just a matter of placing it in our router table and seeing how well it can adjust the height of our router bit. And it works flawlessly. If you would like to try this project, there are free CNC files available on our website. Thanks for joining us and I'll see you next time.